This is our environment. This is our scope of operations. And this is our challenge. In responding to these events that threaten world peace and stability, MAC, the Military Airlift Command, represents the wings of the eagle. Throughout its history, our planet has all too often been at the mercy of natural destructive forces. Such grand-scale devastation is always felt at the personal human level. But our history is also testimony to more frequent, often more violent forces, aggression and conflict waged by people against people. Natural disasters cannot be prevented, but our resources can be marshaled to alleviate suffering and help victims rebuild their lives. Aggression and conflict, on the other hand, can be prevented can be deterred. It also takes human effort and determination applied at the right time and in the right place. It is a fundamental tenet of American policy to help maintain world stability and in so doing ensure peace among nations and the right of their people to self-determination. Our own history of attaining and maintaining individual liberty is our guide. To translate this policy into action takes the willingness and readiness to project American military forces and those of our allies quickly and effectively anywhere in the world where the legitimate call for help is heard. To limit, to contain, to quell the flames of conflict, to keep them from spreading and consuming human lives and freedoms. The very existence of such a capability is in itself a strong deterrence against aggression in the first place. That is the overriding mission of the Military Airlift Command. A difficult, demanding, multifaceted mission. One that can best be defined by demonstration, by showing max actions and reactions to unfolding, critical, potentially catastrophic events. Showing the Military Airlift Command in action is not easy, for there are no typical scenarios. In today's volatile, dangerous geopolitics, the variety of contingencies is limitless. Yet the one unchanging characteristic of Mac's mission is change itself. For Mac must be able to alter direction of its forces to meet rapidly changing conditions or objectives at very short notice and under any unforeseen circumstances. This flexibility to maneuver quickly to many places around the world is the very essence of airlift. So let us see how Mac works on a 24-hour a day, 365 days a year basis. This is the center of Mac operations at Scott Air Force Base, Illinois. And this, the range of its operations. The 21st Air Force, the 22nd Air Force, and the 23rd. We also have worldwide missions of air weather service and aerospace audio-visual services. Conflict knows no boundaries. Trouble spots have been smoldering for quite some time. Most of the world watches and waits, while others seek peaceful ways to resolve the situations. Then, suddenly, a flashpoint is ignited. A small, non-aligned country, friendly to the United States, falls victim to a coup attempt, backed by an outside hostile power dedicated not only to overthrowing the legitimate government, but to imposing its control over the entire region. Critical conditions now exist. American citizens and other neutrals are endangered. Our embassy has been seized, prisoners taken. Leaders of that embattled nation, as well as those of neighboring countries, issue an urgent appeal directly to the U.S. for help in restoring order. For it is this kind of geopolitical instability that can quickly lead to more widespread upheaval. A response is now set in motion. The use of military force not to answer violence with more violence, but with resolute, measured, and rapid response. Not to seek battle or conquest, but to avoid battle and to eliminate the threat of conquest. The trigger, a warning order, coming rapidly through channels to the MAC Command Center. The Joint Chiefs have decided which military units will respond to the threat. The MAC Crisis Action Team is activated. Their task? Gather and analyze critical data. Manage MAC resources. And determine how long it will take to deploy those forces 
and what additional support people and equipment are needed. First, have 141s fueled, configured, and ready at Charleston to begin Make sure we've got three C5s on alpha alert. Work the C5 flow through here, where we can offload and transship Sir, to the air one Intel just confirmed an earlier report that those airfields were seized Air by the Air planning Carolina. cell says that this is the best field to establish our C-130 forward have operation. MC-130s on alert to deploy the Ranger Company on short notice. Times and locations were Intel followed. just confirmed that hostages have been taken and moved out of the city. We'll be receiving air refueling and special ops requirements shortly. We should expect heavy As the contingency plan takes shape, tasking messages are sent to subordinate commands. Crews and aircraft are being readied. Among the first to swing into action are the aerial port specialists. For the airlifting of troops and cargo requires a special kind of people and equipment. And they'll be there at the other end, too. The execution order is given. Deployment begins. And those in the MAC team who stay behind are also part of the command's responsibility. As the crisis unfolds, the president, who has been attending a NATO conference, rushes back to Washington on Air Force One. The 89th Military Airlift Wing transports the president and other VIPs and dignitaries quickly and safely. Under current law, the president can activate a specified number of reservists and National Guardsmen during national emergencies. The MAC reserve components, which make up about half of our wartime capabilities, train alongside active duty forces on a daily basis and are ready and available for service. Fortunately, the scope of this operation does not require a presidential call-up at this time. Our primary objective, restore political stability in the area. Readiness extends even deeper into the civilian sector. As part of MAX planning, aircraft from the nation's air transportation industry can be quickly converted to support the airlift mission. Carrying mainly troops, air crews, and support people with a large amount of cargo, the Civil Reserve Air Fleet can double max total airlift capacity when needed. Rapid long-range deployment. Key aspects of airlift. A flexible response by skilled, highly trained air crews. But our role is not limited to support of combat forces. We too are a combat force, capable of defending ourselves if and when we have to. In this scenario, MAC is first to arrive at the threat zone. A MAC MH-53 payload flies undetected, penetrating deep into the troubled area to deliver our advanced forces, a MAC combat control team. Their primary job, to establish initial control of airlift activities. Also under cover of darkness, MAC MC-130s drop Army Rangers. In other situations, the forces can be Navy SEALs or other special ops units. Their job, seize the runway and create diversionary action to keep the enemy from bringing in reinforcements. Another MAC combat arm, the AC-130 Spectre gunship, deals with pockets of armed guerrilla activity with pinpoint accuracy. But aircraft still cannot land because the safety of air crews and aircraft cannot be guaranteed. So additional airdrop is necessary. With the airfield secured, MAC can now air land men and cargo. As the first transport lands, a mobile self-contained airlift control element is unloaded. It will provide on-site command and control, operations, communications, maintenance, and aerial port services, the critical elements that make sure incoming passenger and cargo flights can land quickly and safely. MAC security police protect the airfield and aircraft once they are on the ground. If needed, the MC-130 can extract other special forces from remote areas. The airlift flow is now well established. Events in the rest of the world also continue, and MAC's global mission does not come to a halt or even slow down. Nor does our involvement in large-scale training exercises. Here, we airlift non-stop a large number of Army troops for airdrop half a world away. Part of an ongoing commitment to excellence through training. The news bulletin reporting a major earthquake in Northern State California. Department just confirmed a major quake measuring 7.1 with its center near Sacramento. Initial reports indicate extensive damage. reports visible damage to their runways and ramps. They recommend may there as an... California open. Emergency Services. This is the Air Force Rescue Coordination Center. FEMA is Center. requesting Stand immediate by. helicopter rescue support. They'll also want medevac aircraft. The Air Force Rescue Coordination Center 
part of MAC's 23rd Air Force, together with other elements of MAG and federal, state, and local emergency services, are part of a worldwide network of military and civilian efforts. The Air Force Rescue motto says it all. These things we do, that others may live. Air Force Rescue is our other helping hand, extended to people in trouble, no matter who they are or what flag they salute. The strength comes from our realistic training exercises and a proud history of combat rescue. These same skills, the same resources, the same measure of devotion, now needed here at home. As in combat, there are casualties. And as in combat, part of the Civil Reserve Air Fleet may be called to augment MAC forces, which will include new 767 and MD-80 civilian airliners. Our policy, prepare for conflict. Our mission, deter or contain it. These same preparations and resources, the same MAC team, now takes on this other kind of challenge. The quake started a major forest fire near Yosemite. Boise Fire Center is asking for immediate Man, assistance. Man, I C-130 guard unit is aware of the situation. Roger, Man, I understand C-135 fighters are airborne. Water level is about seven feet in town already. The fire lines lines are out all over. We need to get some satellite communications in there to establish operations. Some C-12s and C-21s to carry medical supplies and plasma. Bottom line, people needing people. People helping people. Their needs, their safety, the quality of their lives, all are at stake. These are everyday concerns of a people-oriented, people-caring military command. And not just for victims or air crews and support people. It reaches into the very homes of MAC families, too. The situation remains unresolved. It hasn't ended with successful deployment of troops and equipment. There are other needs, more human ones. Just as men are wounded, aircraft and equipment can be damaged and can fail. Without a proven program of maintenance and supply, aircraft cannot fly. And without the airlift response, nobody and nothing can be moved anywhere quickly. For airlift must be capable of sustaining large forces, sometimes for considerable periods of time, regardless of the nature of the conflict or its location. Resupply is the ongoing indispensable component of airlift. The action steadily moves forward away from the airstrip towards the capital to restore order and rescue the hostages. Forward resupply of advancing forces requires various airlift delivery methods. The eyes of the world, friend and foe alike, watch as these events unfold. And America is being judged by its resolve and how it meets its commitments. How, through its airlift mission, a flexible and adequate mix of forces is carefully applied to avoid creating or risking escalation. At last, the fury of nature abates, and MAC and other relief agencies can be withdrawn and redeployed. And in the trouble spot, the conflict also winds down. Guerrilla and terrorist forces are in disarray. Those not captured or surrendering melt back into the landscape, their cause, at least for now, thwarted. With order restored, redeployment begins. We were first to arrive. We are the last to leave just as quickly. Time to pack up and go home, but not relax. Time to look ahead, not back. The future points to a growing need for more responsiveness, more flexibility, more airlift resources. When our present resources were first acquired, they were the most advanced aircraft available at that time. This aircraft, the C-5, has tremendous cargo capacity, but still cannot maneuver well, if at all, on small ramps. This workhorse, the C-141, has good speed and range, but still cannot carry large equipment into forward areas. And the C-130, our mainstay of tactical forward area operations, can land in small areas, but it still cannot carry large cargo and has limited range and speed. We are doing the best we can with these resources, striving to expand their capabilities and improve their performance. But this is not enough. We maintain readiness to respond to contingencies. A conflict, a natural disaster, a vital training exercise. But this is still not enough, because our need is to modernize, to keep pace with aviation high technology, 
Our constantly changing world presents threats that require rapid, complete, decisive responses. Will today's airlift be enough to meet tomorrow's threats? It is our major concern. It is a growing concern. The solution? A modern, state-of-the-art airlifter designed for today's growing needs and tomorrow's realities. An aircraft able to react quickly enough, to fly fast enough, to carry a force strong enough, and to place that force close enough to the heart of a threat, to limit the intensity of conflict, or to prevent it altogether. An aircraft with proven reliability, lower costs, and a smaller crew than now possible. The advanced technology of the C-17 is already in use on civilian and military aircraft and gaining valuable performance data. It is a necessary step into the future to continue a proud history of deterring conflict and helping people, a tradition that began in 1948. Berlin, a city on the brink of starvation and conflict. Airlift broke the blockade. Military confrontation was avoided. Freedom preserved. This was the first time airlift was used as an instrument of national policy. When other cities felt the wrath of nature, Mac was there. When fire, flood, and famine threaten human life and health, Mac people are there. In support of scientific research to benefit all mankind, or to rescue students and support a small country against a threat to hemispheric peace and stability. MAC is there. And we will be there when needed to tailor a force against a threat, an emergency, a contingency, no matter how large the operation or how small. It gives strength and meaning to the American purpose. Military Airlift Command, the wings of the eagle, the wings of freedom.